What's up guys? So today it's not actually a question um, from the viewers. It's a anticipated question because I have no doubt that someone's going to ask this eventually. So I figured I'd, you know, head it off. Um, this thing behind me that I'm pointing to. Um, what is it? So it's my still. Um, basically, it's used to distill alcohol. I don't distill any alcohol now. Um, I had it. It was one of the things that I did use. Um, it's what you see is one part of three. Um, so you have a put, you know, um, I have a tattoo right here. I don't know how well you can see it, but I'll show it here. Um, basically, this first part is the pot still, and that's what you see right there. Um, the second part is the thumper keg and the third part is the condenser and basically they all have their own job. The you know purpose of the pot still is to take the mash, which, you know, is certain alcohol percentage like my mash that I make is typically 18 to 21 percent alcohol by volume. Again, I don't do this anymore. This was for the moonshine that I sold on the dark net um, and to heat it up and you know, um, alcohol evaporates at a lower temperature than water does. So the water and alcohol mixture, the alcohol is separated from the water. Um, and you distill that into a pure alcohol product, which is the basis for all distillation. Um, but this part is the first part where that happens. The alcohol in this section goes up and condenses into a vapor, goes through this hose, and then comes down to a thumper keg, which is kind of like a bong, if you've ever seen one, where it goes down and the there's a hose that goes under liquid. And I usually use alcohol for this. Um, it goes under this liquid and it bloop, 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 air comes up or alcohol vapor comes up, cools off and condenses and then re-evaporates. That thumper keg heats itself through the steam that comes through this pot still. Um, and then it's basically the thumper keg is there for redistillation, almost a refinement. And then it goes through a condenser where the vapor or the alcohol steam is cooled off and turns back into a liquid and you capture the liquid. And that liquid is your moonshine or your pure alcohol. Um, so when the feds raided me, I had this still. You know, um, I had the thumper keg and I had the condenser and I had it all hooked up. I didn't have any mash or any alcohol in it. Um, they actually called the ATF. Um, they were like, oh, you have this, this, you know, this illegal distillation apparatus. And I told them, I was like, listen, like having a still is completely legal. There's nothing illegal with it. I'm not distilling alcohol right now and it was you know i wasn't distilling alcohol at that moment um so it, it's not illegal to possess a still it is illegal to possess a still and create alcohol with it um and i wasn't doing that at the time so um they you know didn't mess with it uh this one particular one cost me $2,500 for that. It's a 40, 45 gallon. It's all copper. Um, the thumper keg is a big 20 gallon. Um, I'll put a picture of it. It's a big 20 gallon um, apparatus. It's all copper. And the condenser, um, again, is all copper. Um, another 20 gallon. Uh, so it's, it's a massive setup, but with this setup, like I, and I would produce, you know, anywhere from like 150 to 170 proof alcohol. Um, and that's like low estimates. Um, I would produce really good alcohol. Now you can get like a, this is just, just a pot still. So this is like how the, the guys who used to make moonshine 150, 200 years ago would make it, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, a lot of alcohol is made using reflux stills, which basically redistill alcohol 10, 15, 20 times before it comes out, you know, uh, more or less. Um, and that's how like a lot of your vodkas, pure vodkas are made is with reflux columns. 
uh, multiple reflux columns in some cases. But um, like I much more of a traditional moonshiner, I guess. Um, I like the flavor of a pot still. I think a pot still, it's just, it's a lot more reminiscent of America, in my opinion. Um, that's how we started. You know, moonshiner started like, you know, with the, you know, on the Appalachian Trail, they would send the military to go collect taxes from the moonshiners. Moonshiners would rebel against the taxes. Um, and like that history, I love. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, I became a moonshiner is I appreciate the history of it. Um, the house where I was making alcohol in um, is 3582 Darling Hill Road in East Burke. That's where the Department of Homeland Security raided. That's where, like, I, you know, conducted all my business. Um, and, like, you can Google that address. You can look at it on Street View. It's a red house with uh, two, uh, an attached two-car garage. Um, if you're looking at the house, um, this was where I distilled, which this door, basically, to the left of it, you have the garage. To the right of it, you have the um dining room it's the um washer and dryer room so you know in there um this this pot still takes it's powered by 220 volt um heating element so i would kill the the circuit breaker um for the dryer i would plug my still into it fill it up get it all set uh, hook up the water, the cold water line from the uh, washing machine um, to the condenser. So I had a constant flow of cool water coming through or cold water coming through. Um, and when I was ready, everything was set, everything was connected. I double checked it all. Um, I would flip the circuit breaker. Then after you flip the circuit breaker, it sounds like a jet taking off. And it builds, so it starts off like really quiet, and it's like, and it's like it gets to a point where it's just like, and like I know the audio is gonna be horrible on that, but it's like a tornado, um, or what I imagine a tornado would sound like. I'm from New England, so I don't know what the hell a tornado sounds like aside from stuff I've seen on YouTube. Um, but it's really loud and it's, you know, cause you have like, I think it's like 5,500 Watts. Um, and it's, you know, 220. So it's super powerful. Um, but with that, I, you know, with this whole setup, I would basically off one run, um, I would end up pulling something like six to seven gallons of you know 150 to 170 proof um alcohol and it's like you know as a moonshiner it'd be like every gallon that i made and like this is a high cost um because i'm not like some farmer using recycled stuff that i have or whatever um i would end up paying like 14 dollars to make a gallon of moonshine um and i could i would sell it on the dark now for a hundred um, so it's, you know, pretty decent profit margin. Um, and my turnover rate from it, you know, me starting the process to make the mash is like seven days. And that's like mixing the ingredients and then letting it sit for seven days and then pulling it out, putting it into that bad boy, heating it up, running it through and, you know, um, Four to five hours later, you know, I have six to seven gallons of pure alcohol um, and with a, with a decent uh, return on investment. So then if I made my apple pie brandy, which I'm not going to tell anyone how to do, um, I'll die with that secret, is it was something that took me a long time to perfect. Um, and it was something that I always got five star ratings on. If, if I was doing my my apple pie brandy, whatever I made. So like if I made, you know, I could turn basically without giving out too much. Um, I could turn one gallon moonshine into five gallons of apple pie brandy. I sold my moonshine for a hundred bucks, um, a gallon 
and I sold my apple pie brandy for 80. So the price difference wasn't all that much. Um, but like with my apple pie brandy, it really, it was just mixing and certain ingredients that I put in and mixed in certain ways. Um, and it was more or less instant. Um, I would let the APB or apple pie brandy sit for two weeks to really mix or congeal. Maybe I don't know if that sounds like the wrong word, but it, and you know, then I would sell it. Um, but you know, if I made a hundred bucks from my, from my moonshine, from a gallon of moonshine, if I sold that same gallon of moonshine as apple pie brandy, I, you know, I would make substantially more, you know, north of 400 bucks. So it was absolutely worth it to sell it like that. <laughs> um, but that's what this is. And you can see it's kind of like buffed. It looks like, um, so I started the process of polishing it, which it's, it's a really involved process. It sucks, especially when you're doing it by hand, you're basically mixing, you know, salt, vinegar, um, is it salt, vinegar, and flour uh, together, and you know, and you're just doing that for ever. It seems like um, to get very little progress. Um, so eventually, that thing will shine. Uh, probably be done in six months uh, if I'm lucky. Um, but yeah, I wanted to give an update as to what this thing was uh, behind me. I knew I was going to get a bunch of questions on it. And I kind of just wanted to to hit it right off the top. Um, you know, it's my still. Um, you know, this is my. I, I like to tell my wife it was my first love, um, and you know, she was she was really my first love. You know, it's just I, it's a you know, you guys get it. Um, but I've you know I've had a lot of fun with that. I was surprised that like when the Department of Homeland Security raided me, they called the ATF and they told them they're like this guy has a still. And, you know, apparently the ATF was like, dude, like he can have a still. It's not illegal. You know, if he's if he's making alcohol in it right now, that's illegal. Um, And like, I was so happy for that, you know, because like I've seen you, know, you see all those like the videos of during like the prohibition when they, you know, they take an axe and they they axe it. And I was just like. Uh, that for me, that was a horrible thought, you know, that was. It was probably the most, it was probably the thing I was worried about the most and getting raided was like them messing with my still. Um, and I got to keep it. So I was amped about that. The guys I got it from, uh, it's called vstills.com or vengeance stills. I'm not, this isn't a plug. Oh, well, it's a plug, but like, I'm not, I don't get anything from that. Um, just a heads up, you know, um, there's no like, you know, I, I make nothing from, it. I'm just telling you where I got it. Um, and like this is years ago, so I don't know if they're even still around, if their products are still the same quality, like what the deal is. Um, the shipping really sucked. It doesn't come to your house. They have like distribution areas. Um, so like I had to go to like two towns over to actually pick the thing up um, and then transporting it was a nightmare, um, but it is absolutely worth it. Um, you know, it definitely paid for itself. Uh, prior to that, I was using a very small pot still. Um, and I'll put a picture up of what that looked like. Um, that one is how I started off. And that was like a hundred to 110 bucks, um, on eBay. Again, they're legal to buy, you know? Um, now the difference between the two is that with the first one that I had, the one I just showed you the picture of that was like a hundred something bucks, that thing would produce about a half a gallon of, you know, 130 to 150 proof alcohol, you know, um, or maybe more if I went really slow uh, with it, which I did. I went really slow um, and it would take me eight hours to do a half a gallon. Now, again, with this thing, I mean, I mean, these are all like kind of off the top of the head estimates. So if I say different numbers, like, oh, he's lying. He said, you know, um, like with this one, it was like, you know, uh, I want to say like five to, to six gallons or maybe even seven um, every like four to five hours. 
Whereas the other one's eight hours, a half a gallon, you know, and in the, the alcohol content on this one was higher. So it was absolutely, so it was a massive upgrade, massive upgrade. Um, but like, if you ever, if you want to see one of these in action, I think one of the best videos on YouTube to watch is um, last, I uh, think it's called The Last Damn Run of Liquor, L-I-K-K-E-R, that all over make. It's a video of Popcorn Sutton, who's like an, kind of an iconic moonshiner, you know? Um, I have a better beard than him, so, <laughs> but <laughs> um, he is, he's, he's definitely a legend. Uh, like, all joking aside, he, you know, he'd been a moonshiner for, like, basically his whole life. Um, and, like, you can watch the video of him, like, doing it old school where they you know they go a lot of the southerners will do it outside you know i'm a yankee so like i'm not i'm not doing all that you know i'm not going out and starting a fire and building a wall around my still and like they they mix it with water which is better than what a lot of moonshiners do a lot of these guys mix it with bad shit um like with mine i never mixed it i never diluted my alcohol at all a lot of people do to smooth it out like at the end of the day I'm assuming if you want to, you know, you want to smooth it out, you can smooth it out yourself. You know, I'm like when I sold it, I would sell a pure product to my customers um, because at the end of the day, like, if they want it smoothed out, like I said, they can do that themselves. Uh, if they want to mix it, they can mix it themselves. Um, but I would give them something pure, which was, you know, kind of dangerous because you're shipping like flammable liquids in the mail. And like, you know, there are times when, you know, you're, you're sending it, you're sending it and you know, it's going to go like in the air. It's going to go on a plane. Um, so like you have to factor, you have to figure that out to make sure like they don't blow up, you know, or like the pressure from the cabin doesn't, doesn't cause them, the jars to, to crack or, you know, yeah, I say explode, but like, I don't mean like TNT, you know what I mean? Like implode or crack and, and drip and, and, you know, cause it's pure alcohol. So there are times like I shipped on times to Alaska, never any issues, you know, it's like, you know, you pay the $25 for shipping. And you pay the hundred dollars for the gallon of moonshine. I'm sending it. And the time I was a, I was a darknet vendor on the darknet, like no one, which blew my mind. No one else sold moonshine on there. And people were like, oh yeah, because like you, know, you can just go to a liquor store. That's stupid. Uh, for me, it was just it was more of a rebellion thing, you know. Like uh, going back to the original moonshiners where they sold it kind of a buck at the IRS. Um, like was the IRS back then, but like, you know, the tax man, um, to fund wars, you know, um, when, when, uh, George Washington would send people to go collect, you know, the army to go collect funds from the moonshiners, like they would, and people got killed, you know, like, uh, they're like, you're not taking my property. Um, and I really respected that. But the, the house that I mentioned, uh, earlier in the video, if you, you know, if you're ever in the area and you actually go there, what you'll see like you pull into the front yard and on the left, halfway up the driveway is a little plaque in the, in the, the front yard. Um, and it's a commem uh, commemoration plaque to the green mountain boys who were basically like Vermonters. Um, and they, they more or less like would travel down to mass and kill redcoats um and come back and like this this is where they lived so like i'm living in a place where a bunch of people who hate or so i'm living in a house where you know a bunch of guys who fought the king uh for independence and hated tyranny um and hated oppression um you know lived and actively killed agents of the king um and I'm doing something that, you know, is embedded in American history. You know, like God's guns and whiskey is kind of like that American, you know, tradition, you know, uh, historically anyways. Um, and so for me, it was, I, I loved it. I loved, you know, being a moonshiner um, and especially doing it in that place. It made it so much more i don't know like i don't want to say spiritual because that sounds really corny but like um i don't know it just it, it really enriched it it brought it to life um it was something i really enjoyed doing um and it's something i could absolutely see myself doing you know professionally um and it's a great 
business, you know, um, alcohol uh, is from like a you know drug dealer's perspective. Uh, it's it's legal. Um, it's super addictive, you know, um, and it's cheap to make and it, it has a quick turnaround time. It's like it's kind of like cannabis where you, know, you have to grow it for 100, 150 days or whatever. And you got to cure it. You got to dry it out properly. You got to, you know, you got a million things that go into it and and the lights and the inline fan and the CFMs that you measure and the parts per million and the water and all these things, you know, um, it's a seven day turnaround, you know, and it's a, you know, it's a basic mix of, of, of yeast and sugar, you know, and water, like all things that are readily available and, and really easy to put together. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, and uh, yeah, I wanted, so I wanted to share kind of that and the history behind it and, you know, my thoughts on the history behind it and the reasons, you know, I, mean, I guess the reasons I got into it was just, you know, to not have to, I mean, originally it was like to not have to pay for, for booze, you know, um, cause you're synthesizing your own and, um, it's just, it's something, I don't know. I thought it was neat. I thought it was a cool thing to do, you know, being a, being a nerd, you know, um, like I'm, you know, I'm synthesizing my own alcohol, you know, and just, that's what's up. I thought anyways, but anyways, uh, definitely love to hear your guys comments on it and any questions you got, put them down below and I'll definitely, you know, I'll answer them. Um, and I'll throw them into the, uh, deep dot, uh, dark net series there. This video isn't going there cause it's not, uh, a question that I'm answering, you know, um, it's separate, but, um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.